Hey everybody, we are going to look at a DLP projector today. I am not going to bother with the model number, it is an NEC V281, but that doesn't matter for this video. We are going to look at adjusting the light tunnel slash integrator slash light rod, I think is the other name for it. I get a lot of requests about how to adjust the picture when you have the light tunnel problem of getting that, um, you know, the, the edge of the picture where it looks all with the rainbow and everything. So I figured let's go over how to adjust it. Um, I was trying to pick a good projector to test and I realized I didn't have a projector that uh, would give me good access to the light tunnel and be able to film at the same time. Um, I have plenty of projectors that I can do this on, but none that I can get you a very good view of the light tunnel. So this one's perfect. I should have been prepared. So here is another optic assembly. Um, this is out of a polyvision. We've got a bunch of those around. There is the light tunnel right here. And this one, when it is installed in the projector, would be sitting this way. Lamp right here shining in. Here's the lamp. Let's, uh, this is a lamp. It's not the same one, but it's close enough. So the lamp would be like this, shining in, hold this right, shining into the light tunnel. So the angle of the light tunnel on this assembly is controlled by tightening or loosening that screw, or tightening and loosening this screw. Now these have been glued. Most of them use some sort of Loctite or super glue or just something to keep them from moving once they're in position. Um, but this one, let's see, I'm going to take the color wheel off and I'll show you from the front what the adjustment looks like, like what you're actually controlling, what you're changing. And uh, to explain it, what you're controlling and adjusting is the angle of the light beam as it feeds into the optic assembly and DMD. So the light shines in here and once that light shines in it hits a mirror which you can probably see in there and then once that goes through the mirror it hits that shape lens which is that that uh, you can kind of see it that lens right there you can see the angle on it and then the DMD would be mounted here. So once the light goes into here, you can kind of see it, see through the, uh, the light tunnel right here, to the mirror, through the shape lens, onto the DMD. Once it shines onto the DMD, it comes back out through the main lens off to your screen. So what the adjustments accomplish is they adjust, the adjustments change where the light tunnel is pointing in reference to the shape mirror and the DMD. The, this first surface mirror that had the tape over it, this one right here, that is statically mounted, that doesn't move. So the only thing you can really adjust is the uh, light tunnel itself. So if I sit on, if I go on this screw right here, let's do it on this camera, you might be able to see it. Let's line it up straight. You might not be able to see it. Wait, yeah, you can. Okay. So watch this area right here. When I tighten it, get on the screw. And what I'm doing is I'm pushing with the screw on this metal tab, and that's moving the light tunnel that way. There's a spring on the other side that pushes back. 
So as I, oh, as I loosen it, it goes back. You can even hear the spring make a little noise there. Then there's another one on the other side that takes care of our up and down. There you go, you can kind of see it moving up and down as I do that. And that's to get the center of the beam onto the center of the DMD. So what I find is I like to, for starting, like if I put a new light tunnel in, I try to put them in the center. Just try to eye it up and get it as much into the center as I can. Uh, then I move on to the next step, which is actually running it with a lamp. You have to run it with a lamp. The only way you can really adjust it. Here's another light tunnel that I um, was doing an experiment with. You can see I cut it right there. But essentially, you know, that's that's this guy right here. So what we were doing is we were making it go that way and that way. So we're just kind of pointing it at the DMD or at the mirror to the DMD. So for an example, so I can show you how you're going to adjust it, we're going to use this NEC here. One of the reasons I want to use this is it's very easy to see everything. And these have, how are these, two millimeter? I think those are two millimeter, yeah, two millimeter hex. So I am going to drop my screwdriver. I'm going to loosen these up. And we're going to make that light tunnel totally out of whack. Let me just make that a little shorter so I don't bump the camera. Alright, so right now when I turn this on, the picture should have a really big shadow on one side. So let's power it up. Get the camera on the screen. And you can see the uh, lights coming on. There's the light. You can see it from the lamp. That's the other reason I picked this projector, is this won't blind me while I work on it. Sometimes I even wear welding glasses, just to make sure. Alright. And let's just lift up that foot. Let's really get it up on the screen. Now, like I said, this does have to be done with the projector on. So find yourself something that you can use uh, to view the projector without hurting your eyes, like uh, uh, welding glasses, even sunglasses would probably work. Let's see, let's tell it to find the source. No. Menu. Let's see, adjust maybe. I want to see if there's a uh, test pattern in here or if we can, or if I have to uh, connect up a source. Let's see, setup maybe. Back, oh, maybe the background. If we have a solid color on the background, there we go. We have white. Blue. We'll go with blue. All right. All right. So I turned the lights off because so I wanted to make this way more obvious. And you can see the light tunnel is off here. And there we go. And there. So the way to adjust it, at least the way I adjust it, is I pick one axis and I start with there. I'll start there with that axis. There we go. There's the words. 
So you can see I have the, uh, got the screwdriver in there. Now if this was a Phillips, I'd be using a Phillips head. And then just very slowly start turning it. Now I back this screw all the way out. Oh, there we go. Just turn it until it starts to move. As soon as it starts to move, stop. Then go to the other screw and bump the camera. Because I want to turn this one until that side starts to move. There we go. So once that side starts to move, then I know the spring is being compressed a little bit. There's some pressure pushing against the side, and that means the light tunnel won't slide around on its own. It's being held. So what I'm going to do now, I'm actually going to shim this projector up just a little bit. We're not seeing the bottom of the screen. There we are. Now we can see the bottom of the screen. So now that we can see the bottom of the screen, let's start with that first screw again. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn it until the shadow gets to the bottom. I'm probably going to turn it more in a moment, but I'm going to stop there. Then, again, I'm going to go back to the other side. Ah, that screwdriver's too long. And then we're going to watch the other side. Again, the same thing until the shadow is out. Now, if you overturn it, then you'll see the other side will start to move in. That means you want past center. So sometimes I do that anyway. I'll go past center just to make sure I have enough, you know, because you're not quite sure if you're in there all the way. So a lot of times I'll go past center and then back it off a little bit again. We'll do the same with the up and down. See, there's the, the top coming down. Wow, that's not moving. There we are. So what I did there, I was tapping just to get the uh, spring to push back. This probably hasn't been adjusted since it left the factory, you know, 10 years ago. So. There we go. So what we'll do here is I'll just start tightening down that top side again. So I start pushing. There we are. Now we're pushing on it. And just bring it down until it stops. See, if you have one tight and one loose, then it's going to be hard for it to move the other direction. So I find that that's why you just want to bring it down until it's snug. So let's get those loose again. And then we're going to start tightening that. That's good. There. And then we'll tighten in this one. And once that right side moves over... Like that, we are good. So that's it. That's 
all you have to do. It is far from rocket science. Um, it can be a little finicky, if you will, depending on where the screws are located. Sometimes the screws will be, you know, closer to the front. See, I'm working here and then here. But for instance, on this one, the, uh, the screws are, <coughs> pardon me, the screws are in the front. See, that'd be pointed that way. So one screw's there and one screw's there. So this one wouldn't be too bad, but this one would be kind of a hassle. You have to take the front off. So the screws are not always in the same spot, but they perform the same thing. So if you need to adjust your light tunnel, this tells you how to do it. Um, if you need to know specifically for your projector, put it in the comments below. And as always, thank you for watching.